And welcome back to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Oh, I got a little bit of a challenge today. I need to try and fit all of this into this. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this. So let me just go over all the different bits and pieces here. So this is my amplifier. I would have made a headphone connection for this, except of course, if you have a closer look at it, you might be able to tell that it is a bridged amplifier. So that's kind of out of the question. Got my audio mixer circuit here, which you saw a few videos back. The headphone amplifier from the previous video. And of course I want to stick one of these in here as well. Not to measure output, but to measure input. Because I'm weird like that. So anyway, I've already cut a hole for the level meter to go through and that fits pretty nicely. It's a bit tight, but there we go. So, how am I going to get all of this other stuff in? Well, I haven't decided that yet, so... This is going to be like a real-life Tetris puzzle. Somehow, I'm going to get all of that in there. I don't know how, but I'm cool dude Clem, and I can do anything. Well, um, while well, I'm trying to figure out that, I think my works at um, plastic are a lot better than they are with metal. It's nice soft plastic, so I could cut this out nice and good. So here's our audio mixer circuit, and yeah, I've still got to figure out how everything is going to go in. Okay, so another thing I'm going to need to do, since this runs on 5 volts, or at least is happy running on 5 volts, and I'm going to be using one of these, I'm going to need to make a voltage regulator so I can provide the 5 volts for this thing. So I found a scrap LM317 voltage regulator, Put a few resistors on it, which should give us the 5 volts that we need. So on my feedback circuit, I'm using a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. And if I hold on, hold this right here. I need a 1.6 kilo ohm resistor for the other resistor. Of course, I don't have a 1.6 kilo ohm resistor. Who does? So I've just made one out of two other resistors. Right, so let's see if that was right. I'm just going to hook this up to a 9 volt battery to see if we get the um, voltage we need. Let's make sure I've got the polarity around the right way, because I don't want to zerp anything. Oh yeah, it would help if I had the meter on the voltage setting rather than ohms. Let's see. Oh yes, right on the money. Right, okay. I've just got everything in the box here in a sort of like a mock-up kind of way. Just to make sure that things are working. And... Indeed they are. And I've got the level meter on. Now, like with the level meter in the microphone preamp, I've also put a resistor between the signal and the input, you know, to lower the volume, but I've only used 220k this time, and that's not really enough, because if I start the computer generating a tone, you can see here that the volume is only about halfway from the tone we're getting. I'm not seriously pegging this thing. I mean, it's going all the way off, so yeah. Still a little bit too sensitive, so I'm going to take a couple of resistors here. You know, put one from here to ground and one from here to ground to lower the sensitivity and that should fix that. So, putting a 20k variable resistor between here and ground, remember it's also going through these 220k resistors before it actually gets into the meter, so we're not actually shorting out anything. With the resistor set to about whatever it is right now, like this, it's right around where it needs to be. Pay no attention to this side, we're just having a look at this side, and yes I know it's upside down. That doesn't really matter right now. So whatever I've got this set to is the resistance I'm going to use. 
Right, well, everything's in here now. Everything's in here now. I just gotta wire all this lot up together. So I'm thinking of powering the headphone amplifier, the main amplifier, and the level meters of the same supply because they're all negative ground. I use the negative as the ground. But for the mixer, because that doesn't use the negative as ground, that has a virtual ground, that will have to be powered off a separate supply. Because, go me. Well, here it is. The completed thing. I know it looks like a huge mess, but then my construction skills are not that good. I'm a little worried about here because there's a there's a post right there where um, the screw's going to go through. So yeah, that might actually um, I might actually have to do something about that. Anyway, I guess I need to plug this in and see if it works. Okay, well we did have a problem. The level meter was shorted out, so it was not so it's just shorting everything out. So I've rearranged a few things. I've put the voltage regulator for the um, level meter over there. Hopefully that won't short out on anything. I'm just making sure that all the stuff comes on when I plug this in. I'm just giving this a quick power up on the bench to make sure everything's good. Okay, yeah, the level meter is working now. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But, yeah. Oh, does the little light on the amplifier itself come on? Yep, yeah, I can see a little red light there. That's good. Okay, the only other thing I want to test is the headphone amplifier. Make sure that's working. So I'm just going to plug the headphones in. And if I get a little thump, out of the headphones when I apply the power. Oh well, no, it's good. So here I am applying the power again. Yep. Headphones are working. Even though there's no signal going in, I can hear by the thump. So, next thing to do is to put this over at my computer and see if it actually works. Before I do that I'll just give you a little brief tour of it. So this is the front panel, we've got the level meter, volume control for the speakers, headphone sockets, and left and right volume controls for the headphones because there's always one headphone that sounds louder than the other one so having dual controls for the headphones makes more sense. And of course on the back we have input 1, input 2, auxiliary output and this is the input for the mixer power input for the mixer. This is the power input for the amplifier and the LED meter and the headphones and these wires are where the speakers connect. So Let's see if it works. Oh well, it does work. But there's problems, as usual. The headphones are the wrong way around. The left sound is coming out of the right, and the right sound is coming out of the left. Same thing goes for the speakers. Also, one side of the meter is clearly more sensitive than the other. Problems, problems, problems. That's why my things are always so messy, because I put it together, you know, it's all tested on the breadboard, it's all working and all good. I put it into a project box, and things go wrong. So I have to make all these little alterations to it, until it finally works. Well, here it is, the final design. So, I have swapped the connections on the headphone amplifier, so we should get the left out of the left and the right out of the right. Also. I have added these trimmers, I guess you could call them trimmers, so I can adjust the sensitivity of the level meter. And you might have noticed these resistors here that weren't there now. 
That's so I can use the stereo mono switch, which I've added there. Which is just glued in by super glue because I haven't got the right size nut to secure that on. That's why that other hole was there, actually. But, yeah, it's done. So I just gotta plug this in. See if it works. Well, here it is. And as far as I'm concerned, it's done. So all I've got to do is put the thing on there. And I'm going to call this a day. And yeah, as usual, here is the um, schematic of how it works. I thought I'd color code it. Make it a little more easy to understand what's going on. So yeah, that just brings us to the end of this video, and until next time, goodbye.